OpenAI is aiming to become the monopoly for your AI agents. That's become clear with the release of structured outputs in the API. Not to mention all the drama around this I rule the world MO Twitter account that apparently is agentic powered by the next version of GPT. You've already seen this though via the other channel, so I don't wanna waste your time, but we do have to highlight the three most important details of this release. Number one, we have 100% guaranteed structured outputs for function calling. Using Pydantic or Zod, you wrap the object that is going to be the parameter for your method, and you can be guaranteed GPT-40 will respond in that format. Number two, we have 100% guaranteed structured outputs for data models. Following the same line, instead of wrapping it in that method, you pass it in the response format and you just give the exact Zod or pedantic object structure that you want your LLM to respond with and it gives it to you 100% guaranteed. Lastly, we have a 50% cost reduction in the state-of-the-art GPT-40 model that cuts the price on inputs by 50% and outputs 33%. This release makes it dead simple for you to build domain-specific agents that are highly reliable. In this video, I want to show off an OpenAI exclusive super agent that you can use to build highly reliable domain-specific agents that you can interact with in natural language. Hey Ada, how are you? Hey Dan, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? What's on your mind today? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Can you go ahead and generate three images of a beautiful sunset landscape? Focus on the ocean and sunset gradients between the blue, reds, and orange colors. Generate these in landscape format. Hey, just wanted to let you know that I've run the Generate Image Params tool. What's next? Awesome, thank you, Ada. Can you go ahead and convert versions zero and one into JPEGs? Hey, just ran the Convert Image Params tool for you. Let me know if you need anything else. I need a square icon of version two. Can you resize version two to be 100 by 100 pixels for me? Sure, I'll resize version two to a square icon at 100 by 100 pixels right now. Give me a moment. Ada, go ahead and resize version two into a 100 by 100 pixel version. That's 100 width, 100 height. Hey, I just ran the resize image params tool. Let me know what you need next. Fantastic. Ada, go ahead and open the image directory. I've just run the open image dire params tool. What do you need next? All right, so what you just saw was a showcase of a OpenAI assistant using speech-to-text and text-to-speech running the brand new structured outputs to call these four functions. You can see here, generate image, convert image, resize, and open image directory. That opened this directory here on my Mac, just like I asked. And you can see here we have the three original versions as PNGs. We then got the converted JPEGs, and then lastly, the resized. That all happened in natural language, talking to my personal AI assistant, which underneath the hood is powered by this OpenAI AI agent that contains these four tools.
You can see here, just like in their documentation, you specify a list of tools, you pass in the params that will be needed to call each function, and better than ever, this just works. I don't know about you, but in the past, for me, function calling and tool calling has been a huge pain to try to get your assistant to call the right method. As you saw there in the demo, we did have to correct the resize function tool call. We had to ask twice to get that resize done, but overall the function calling abilities have gotten much better and they've gotten a ton simpler. Let's go ahead and look at the generate image param so we can just look at what that looks like. I asked Ada to generate three images and that means three prompts. I didn't specify the quality, but I did ask for an image ratio to be landscape mode. And you can see here in the image ratio enum, we have three options and landscape was selected for each image. If we pull up one of these versions, you can see here we have that wide image and we have the correct pixel size here. So this is great. I'm a huge fan of specifying the enums. It narrows down the number of options that your AI assistant can select from versus it just being a raw string. So this is what the generate image params looks like and, and that's how it calls the function that it needs to call. If we scroll down here a little bit, if we detect a tool call from the parse response, we print out the arguments and you can see that here. So if we just search tool call found, you can see that our resize image params got printed out here. I specified version numbers two, and I wanted the width and height to be 100 by 100. We then have a simple map between the parameter name and the function that it gets passed into. And then of course, we just call that method. So building AI agents that are domain specific and highly reliable is now simpler than ever. It's easier than ever. OpenAI is becoming the framework for building agentic software. You can imagine a whole different slew of these tools that power a Twitter bot, for instance, right? It could have a get tweets function call. It could have a tweet function call. It can have a generate image function call, right? It can do literally any one of these things that it's doing here. The trick here is how interesting the content coming out of this is. Again, assuming this is actually an agentic Twitter account, assuming this is a GPT next powered account. But you know, you can put all these things together and it's not a far-fetched idea to really see that this could be fully run by an agentic workflow that on a loop on some period calls one or more uh, Twitter related functions and information gathering functions and you know creative copy and image generating tools. It also has some really great uh, retweet, requote functionality, and you know it's got linking functionality. So it's very likely that this is the GBT Next model with a bunch of really really cool. Uh, function calling. But you know, I don't want to speculate on that too much. I think it's really interesting, uh, all the drama and all the hype that this account has stirred up. Big shout out Strawberry, big shout out Sam Altman. This guy is a marketing hype genius. Structured Outputs really enables you to build high quality, highly reliable AI agents that could really solve any problem. We plugged into Dolly 3 to generate images. We are using Pillow to convert images, resize images, and then just basic operating system calls to open up our image directories. So this is really cool, really interesting. There are many, many, many use cases for this. If you're interested in this, you know, drop the like, drop the sub, and check out the code base, link in the description. I'm going to reuse our fast personal AI assistant code base and just push up this structured outputs branch. For you to take a look at this and get started really quickly, I also have an example of OpenAI's code that they have on their blog where they are using both the response format and their tool calling with their exact examples. So this will be in the description for you. Let's go ahead and do some quick reflection on this. Right now, everyone is obsessed with agents. On the channel, we try to stay one step ahead of the game. I'm predicting what comes next is personalized assistants that have many agentic workflows and AI agents underneath them that you can work with quickly to get work done faster than ever. In terms of building out your specific AI agents, I highly recommend digging into 
one specific problem, build out your agent to solve one specific problem, build a image modification agent, build a domain specific copywriting agent, build a code base specific coding agent. I do think that we are trying to expand and going too wide when really there's a ton of immediate value that can be had uh, by going narrow and building out agents that do one thing and do one thing well. From what I can see, Anthropic has a decent lead with Claude 3.5 Sonnet and Artifacts, especially for writing code. Nothing compares to Claude 3.5, despite what the benchmarks say. And with all the news about Strawberry, it seems the arrival of GPT Next seems near and that's likely to shake up the entire LLM ecosystem once again. The best thing we can do as software engineers and product builders is build reusable building blocks that we can use today, tomorrow, and over the next years as these models continue to improve, as price goes to zero, and as the next generation of models are released. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, drop a sub, get this code base in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.